guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about the connection between dairy and skin. Uh, I'm gonna be answering your questions about dairy and acne, and does dairy cause wrinkles? Does it age our skin? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. Um, I'm sipping here on my daily nutritional insurance, as I call it, my athletic greens. I love having this every day. They are sponsoring a portion of today's video. And if you guys click the link in my description box, you can get five individual travel packets plus a year's worth of vitamin D. Uh, so take advantage of it. I highly recommend it. Very good stuff. All right, we all know that there's a lot of talk about diet and acne. Specifically, dairy gets the limelight, it seems. Well, there is quite a bit of data to suggest there is a connection between milk, dairy milk consumption and acne. And I'm gonna get into that in a moment. But, you know, people always want to hone in on what is the best diet for skin and for acne. Simply put, the perfect diet doesn't exist. And while we have data that shows that certain diets may play a role or certain components of a diet may play a role in aggravating skin conditions like acne, eczema, psoriasis, as well as aggravate you know, some of the visible signs of photoaging. It's not as though we can say, oh, this is the best diet. Perfect diet simply does not exist. And so you know, our nutritional needs, they vary a lot from day to day based on you know, your sleep pattern, if you're under a lot of stress, kind of activity you're doing, if you're really you know, active, doing sports, what have you. Um, so it's pretty easy actually, if you're not paying attention to miss certain key nutrients in your diet, just, you know, stress kind of throws a wrench in your eating plans. And that is why I'm such a fan of the Athletic Greens Ultimate Daily. It's got 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that pack a nutrient punch. Um, I have it first thing in the morning, typically on an empty stomach but it's great, you know, you can have it any time throughout the day, there's no caffeine in it. I think of it as like an amplified multivitamin to really bridge any gaps in day-to-day -day nutrition. As I said, sometimes your schedule, it just gets derailed and you may not have access to the most nutrient-dense foods in those situations. So it's nice to square away your nutritional needs every day. I've made it a habit actually to have this every day. I've been consuming it since, well over a year now. I have it every day. I don't even like, you know, I, I can't imagine not having it. It's really just a daily habit for me at this point. And I love how easy it dissolves in water. It's not clumpy. It tastes great. It has like a vanilla taste. It is um, vegan, obviously, because I consume it, dairy-free. Uh, and it's 100% keto-friendly and paleo-friendly. And there's no gluten. They put so much care and detail into the quality of the ingredients in the product. Uh, they wanna make sure that every ingredient is in its most bioavailable form, meaning a form that your body can actually absorb. And I also love that they are NSF certified for sport. Having that extra party testing on their product really elevates it and speaks to the quality of what you're getting. Nutrition is so vital to the function of our immune system. Have you ever noticed that maybe if you're not eating very well, you're more prone to getting run down and getting sick? I mean, that is a telltale sign of the connection between what you put in your body and the function of your immune system that keeps you healthy and, and well. Um, so that is yet another reason why I really like the Athletic Greens. It's like a, a multivitamin amplified. So you guys, if you click the link in my description box, you can get their immunity bundle, which includes five individual travel packets, plus a year's worth of their vitamin D. Definitely take advantage of it. Um, I strongly recommend it. It is a perfect way to square away your daily nutritional needs, keep you from getting run down, and it tastes great. Let's talk about acne first and foremost. I think that's what really comes to people's mind when we're talking about this connection between dairy and the skin is acne. I think you hear the most about that. Uh, and again, it's not like we have one particular diet that we can recommend to patients with acne. And truthfully, some things that have been shown to aggravate acne, they don't aggravate acne in everyone. It's hard to predict who is going to be affected. If you've been trying topicals, 
and you have done other lifestyle modifications, it makes sense to really critically evaluate your diet. And herein comes a connection with dairy. There is a connection between specifically milk consumption, dairy milk consumption, and more stubborn acne. Uh, and it seems as though it's unique to skim milk, and I'll get into why that might be. We've appreciated this connection between diet and acne for a long time. As a matter of fact, there is a study that looked at two uh, communities that are sort of isolated. One was the uh, Kitavan Islanders of Papua New Guinea, and the other is a group, the Ache Hunter Gatherers of pa Paraguay. Anyways, these two isolated communities, they have zero acne. What's unique about them is their diet has virtually no refined carbohydrates and no dairy. So that's kind of what sparked this intrigue into dairy. There are also other studies looking at teenagers, teenage males, and their dairy consumption. And there's always there's this, this connection between milk consumption and more stubborn acne. We think the reason this might be has to do with the hormone profile of dairy milk of cow's milk. We know that hormones are a major, major factor in the pathogenesis of, pathogenesis of acne. Hormones, uh, you know, the skin in general, it's a steroidogenic organ. Uh, it's very responsive to hormones. And uh, we know that uh, hormones, they actually play a major role in oil production and sebum production. Dairy milk is this kind of very complicated mixture of a variety of different minerals, vitamins, proteins, and you know a variety of hormones, prolactin, growth hormone promoting proteins, and you know proteins that uh, can elevate something called insulin-like growth factor, which we know has a major role in elevating oil production. It's thought that the insulin-like growth factor in dairy milk can increase oil production or sebum, you know, sebum is the medical term for oil from the skin, sebum production by up to 60%, major likely factor in acne. Hormones in milk vary a lot depending on the species and on the relationship to parturition, which basically is delivery. We think the most likely hormonal candidate present in dairy milk that drives acne is insulin-like growth factor one. Blood levels of insulin-like growth factor one uh, in pre-puberty, puberty, adolescence, and adulthood, they um, approximate the acne prevalence curves. IGF-1 is present in ordinary milk, but it's also present at high levels in dairy milk from cows that have been treated with recombinant bovine hormone to increase their milk supply. So it's even higher than what would naturally be present. This high level of insulin-like growth factor, not only does it increase sebum production contributing to acne, but it is very inflammatory to have those levels of insulin-like growth factor. That is actually a contributing factor. That hormone and high levels of it are, you know, play a role in a lot of metabolic diseases. Elevated levels of insulin-like growth factor also are responsible for that skin thickening condition, acanthosis nigricans, where you get dark velvety plaques on the back of the neck. You can also get these plaques on the face and the extremities, like on your elbows, even on the backs of your hands, on the, on the knuckles. And we primarily see this in people who are obese or have type two diabetes, but given what I told you about the levels of IGF-1 in milk, it's something to think about. There's also some evidence that IGF-1, possibly from dairy, contributes to prostate cancer and maybe even breast cancer, although the epidemiologic studies for that, they're limited, not super conclusive, but there is some evidence to suggest that perhaps the IGF-1 in our milk supply is contributing to the to the pathogenesis of can certain cancers. So it's clear that there is a link between dairy milk and acne, but it seems to be specific to skim milk. And why that is, we really don't know. It may have something to do with the fact that the skim milk, maybe it allows for a greater bioavailability of these hormones, uh, you know, making it you know, even more of a threat. Or it may be due to the fact that um, full fat or partial fat milk has more estrogen in it balancing out some of these pro-acne effects of the other hormones in the milk. 
Uh, so that is a possible reason, but again, we don't really know. And I have always questioned this association in a sense that is skim milk guilty by association? Meaning, do people who drink skim milk, are they somebody who has an inflammatory diet that is rich in sugary foods that we also know play a major role in acne? It is not uncommon here in the US of A for kids to not, not only be drinking skim milk, but to be eating breakfast <coughs> cereal with skim milk. And go down the breakfast cereal aisle in this country and 99.9% .9 of all breakfast cereals are packed with added sugar. Now I've said this in other videos, sugar is not the devil, but diets rich in sugary processed foods generate a lot of inflammation in the body, raise IGF-1 levels, and contribute to acne. You have to remain objective and always question everything. <clears throat> that is a possible explanation that ha is gonna be very difficult, if not impossible, to tease out uh, from, from the acne, you know, acne literatures. What else do these people eat? Another possible reason is that Skim milk, because it doesn't have the fat component, is less satiating, so maybe they're eating more sugary cereal because they don't have that fat piece to help lessen the overall glycemic uh, load of the food you know, from the sugary cereal, and it's not as satiating, so they're eating more of it. That is something that is not factored into the dairy acne studies. It'd be, let's face it, it's, it's difficult, nearly impossible to do something like that. Here's what I can tell you. If you have acne and you've tried, you know, you're using standard acne treatments, you've done other lifestyle modifications that we've talked about, exercise, you're sleeping well, you're not consuming alcohol in excess, you're not smoking, all those things that drive a lot of inflammation to the body. It is worthwhile examining your diet and seeing if perhaps that dairy milk consumption is associated with your acne. It may be worthwhile to eliminate it for you know a few weeks, see if things get better, and then reintroduce it. If the acne flares again, well, might be worthwhile to you know avoid consuming dairy milk. As it stands, we don't really have any data to suggest that other types of dairy are associated. So yogurt, cheese, ice cream uh, seem to not be a problem. Uh, now, again, ice cream I say, but remember, high sugary, sugary foods can, you know, play a role too. So pay, pay attention to the dairy in your diet. If you feel as though it is playing a role, not harmful to try and avoid it for a while, see if things get better. And if they do, and then you reintroduce and it comes back, well, that tells you that it's definitely playing a role in your acne. Remember guys, acne is a multifaceted disease process. There are a lot of arms to what triggers acne. It starts with you know, likely genetics, and then there's environment. So you may have acne that is such that no amount of dairy is gonna make a difference. Uh, that may just be the nature of your acne. Maybe it has something to do with the type of acne causing bacteria you're colonized with. We, these are things we don't have answers to. This is why we don't make blanket statements that people with acne need to go dairy free or you know go go vegan or go on any of these you know particular diets because there is no right diet for everyone. And you know again, if you find that dairy aggravates your acne, it's worth taking taking a break from it, seeing if things improve, but it is not a hard and fast rule. Dairy is dairy milk is bad and you know must be avoided if you have acne. What about the rest of our skin? You know, is there any benefit to avoiding uh, cow's milk consumption for just overall skin health? But logic follows that that inflammation is going to drive more oxidative stress in the skin that contributes to wrinkles. So you could look at it from that angle. You could make the argument that it might be you know, worthwhile considering not consuming as much uh, cow's milk. Uh, however, it's not like we have an epidemiologic study saying, hey, this group consumed milk, this group didn't look at the wrinkle difference. No, there's so many factors that go into play when it comes to skin aging that that's really hard to tease out. You know, you gotta pull out things like smoking, uh, 
where you where you reside if you live somewhere where there's a lot of pollution that we know contributes to the signs of aging if you have other co comorbid diseases like maybe maybe you have an autoimmune disease you take a medication that makes you more vulnerable to the sun any number of things you can see how they start to confound this is why diet studies are so tricky if not impossible to conduct I mean, it's virtually impossible, not to mention you have a major issue with recall bias in the majority of these. People who have acne and are being questioned about their dairy consumption are probably more likely to recall their dairy, you know, falsely recall or over-report their dairy consumption as opposed to people who don't. Uh, you know, there's a reporting bias, recall bias, things like that that really affect these and make diet studies, in my opinion, always flawed. And so whenever anybody comes at you with a diet study trying to tell you how to live your life, do what feels right for you. Uh, I'm not here to tell anybody that they have to avoid cow's milk, but you know, if you do find that it aggravates things, you don't need it to live. So try avoiding it and seeing if things improve. Uh, a very simple approach. So that's what I can tell you guys about the role of dairy and acne and skin. I hope this video is helpful to you all. I will list my references down below in the description box. And again, don't forget to check out Athletic Greens. You can get their immunity bundle, which includes five individual travel packets. Uh, so great for any upcoming travel you may have, keep you, you know, healthy and you get that year's worth of vitamin D. So that is great. Take advantage of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.